Good morning, everybody. So this morning, we're going to be reading from the book of Hebrews, verse 11, 1 to A few years ago, my wife bought me a car for Valentine's Day. I don't know whether it's through love or the fact I was using hers all the time and she was getting fed up with being stuck in the house. But with the car came this book. Now, it's the instruction manual to that car. And in that instruction manual, it tells me about the safety features it's got. Okay, it's got, obviously, the seat belts. Every car's got seat belts. It's got anti-lock braking system. So if I was ever sort of have to put my foot down, fasten the brakes, I wouldn't skid anywhere. And it tells me it's got airbags. All these things I can't see. Okay, I have to trust that what's in this book is actually in my car. Okay, I have to trust that the person that put them in there was at Friday afternoon, hoping to get home early. I forgot to connect a few things together. Okay, so I have to put trust that every time I get in my car, no matter how I drive or where I drive to, that I'm going to be safe, get from point A to point B. Okay, that trust is also known as faith. So I have to have faith that those things are going to work in my car. I've got exactly the same thing here, an instruction manual. Yeah, an instruction manual to life. And throughout it, it tells me all these things that are going to keep me safe. Okay, I don't have to worry with this book, whether the person was on a Friday afternoon hoping to get home early. Okay, I know that God himself put these words into people's minds and into this book. Yeah, and every single promise that's made in here yeah, is going to be carried out. Okay. So when it is that you're obviously thinking about how you're going to present a sermon, a couple of good questions are who, where, and why, or when. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background first to Hebrews. As soon as I find the page. Okay, we don't know who the author of Hebrews is. Okay, some people suggest it's Barnabas, Luke, or even Apollos. Whoever he was, he knew Timothy. We don't even know who we're sending it to, but it seems to be aimed at the Jewish Christians. Okay, when? It was probably written about late 600 AD. It was certainly written before the destruction of the Jerusalem temple by the Romans at AD 70, because when the writers referred to the temple, he uses the present term, not the past. And what? Hebrews' letter aimed at Jewish Christians is drenched in references to Jewish scriptures. It's full of Jewish imagery of priests and sacrifices and the temples of the law. So that's just a bit of background to Hebrews. It's not something that I read all the time, I have to be honest. See, when I became a Christian, I was told to read the New Testament. And you sort of get stuck on some of the parables don't really move forward past them. You, sort of, you, you reflect on them quite a bit, how they might sort of be reflective in your own life. Now, Hebrews is not something that I read all the time. So when it was I was, I was praying and asking like, the Lord to tell me what it was he wanted me to speak about this morning, as I said before, in your own way, you, sort of, you create what you think you should be talking about. I, I looked at Luke. I looked about sort of, uh, Mary and Martha. I looked at the Lord's Prayer and explanation of that. But all the time in the back of my head, and I've heard the word used a few times this morning, faith. God kept putting that word into my head. Now, we were asked to give a few testimonies before. I've been married three years this Wednesday. Yes, we, we got, we, my wife and I stood there, and we made our vows. And I know that through faith, that the Lord has given me, obviously, the ability to be a good husband every single day so far. Not through, obviously, in my own mind, but because I pray every morning. That's my prayer. Lord, let me be a good man today. Let me be a good husband. And I know through faith yeah, that he gives me that ability. Every single day I ask for it. And every single day he gives it to me. Now, sometimes I go in my own way and I don't get it, always get it right. But I still give the prayer every single morning because I believe through faith that that's what the Lord's going to give me. That's, that strength to be a good man. That strength to be a good husband. So what is faith? So faith 
is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Yeah, this is what the, the ancients were commended, or the Hebrews were commended for. So I'm going to read verses 11, 1 to 17 to you. So I've not got, I couldn't find my glasses this morning, so I've had to bring the youth Bible out with me because it's got bigger text. <laughs> so faith. Faith is what makes the real things we, cannot, we hope for. It is proof of what we cannot see. God was pleased with the people who lived a long time ago because they had faith like this. Faith helps us understand that God created the whole world by his command. This means the whole things that we can see are made by something we cannot be seen. Cain and Abel both offered sacrifices, but Abel's offered a better sacrifice to God because he had faith. God said he was pleased with what Abel offered and so called him a good man because of his faith. Abel died, but through his faith, he is still speaking. Enoch was carried away from this earth, so he never died. The scriptures tell us that before he was carried off, he was a man who pleased God. Later, no one knew where he was because God had taken Enoch to be with him. This all happened because he had faith. Without faith, no one can please God. Whoever comes to God must believe that he is the real and the rewards that are sincerely true to find him. Noah was warned by God about things that could not yet see. He had faith and respect for God, so he built a large boat to save his family with his faith. Noah showed that the world was wrong, and he became one of those who were might, made right with God through faith. God called, God called Abraham to travel to another place to be promised to give him. Abraham did not know where the other place was, but he obeyed God and started traveling because he had faith. Abraham lived in a country that God promised to give him. He lived there like a visitor who did not belong. He, lived, he, died, he did this because of faith. He lived in tents with Isaac and Jacob, who also received the same promise from God. Abraham was waiting for the city that has real foundations. He was waiting for the city that is planned and built by God. Sarah was not able to have children, and Abraham was too old, but he had faith in God trusting him to do what he had promised. And so God made them able to have children. Abraham was so old when he was almost dead, but from that one, but from that one man came so many descendants there are stars in the sky. So many people came from him. They are like grains of sand in the seashore. All these great people continued living with faith until they died. They did not get things God promised his people, but they're happy just to see the promises coming far in the future. They accepted the fact that they were like strangers and foreigners on earth. When people accepting something like that, they show they're waiting for a country that be their own. If they were thinking about the country they had left, they come back, but they're waiting for a better country, a heavenly country. So God is not ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared a city for them. 17. God tested Abram's faith. God told him to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Abram obeyed this because he had faith. He had heard his promises from God, and God had already said to him, it is through Isaac that your descendants will come. But Abram was ready to offer his only son. He did this because he had faith. He believed that God had, could raise people from death, and really when God stopped Abram from killing Isaac, it was, it was if he got him back from death. So Hebrews is really a book about faith and giving examples of it. Okay, we read through the Old Testament 
and we read through sort of the New Testament. And a lot of the time, they sort of they appear to be on their own, but here's Hebrews bringing them all together for us. Okay, it explains faith as something we can't see, something we can't touch, but something that's promised to us, either now or in the future. And that's what faith ultimately is. It's, it's trusting in those promises. And as I said before, I've got a book here that's obviously promising all sorts of weird and wonderful things in my car for us to go wrong. But I've got a book here that also promises yeah, that every single promise that made by the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come to fruition. So I'm going to just break it down a little bit more. So in part 1 to, to 12, so 1 2 of Hebrews, we discover the essential characteristics of faith from the writer's point of view. Faith deals with the future, what we hope for, and the things unseen, so what we do not see. So this is both, can mean both the expression of confidence in God's promises and faith in the substance of things hoped for. Faith ultimately gives substance to things that we hope for. This does not mean that the Gospels are in true Jesus because we simply believe it. So we don't, the Gospels aren't true just because we simply believe. Rather, it is true because we hope and it's confirmed our experiences when we live by faith in God's promises. Okay, so it's not true just because we believe it. It's because we experience it. I know that God's changed my life so much in the last few years since I became a Christian that I'm not recognizable as that same person anymore. And I know no matter what happens tomorrow, if I have the faith, it's the right thing that happens. Whatever happens to me tomorrow, whatever, it's because God wants it to. God either wants me to learn from it or grow from it or share it or experience it. So I can take that on board that those promises today are for tomorrow as well. So the writer starts with Genesis because faith it is God, the creator of everything. It's fundamental to the, the Bible's belief. God created absolutely everything. That's our fundamental belief. That's where we start from. The whole universe and everything in it was created by God. By our faith, we understand the universe created by God's command. Is God is in control of nature and history, past and present, Every generation of believers can trust the promises about the future, no matter what it may cost them. Abel's faith was expressed when he offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. The difference was not in the substance of the sacrifice, but in the attitude of the sacrifice. Enoch's experience is being taken from life so he did not experience death, was a sign it was commended yeah, as one who pleased God. So he didn't actually experience death. He was just taken. He pleased God that much. At Genesis yeah, 5, 22, 24, insists he walked with God. We can take this as a light, as, a, as his like characteristics of faith, or life characterized by faith. When Noah was warned about the flood, he responded to the word of God in holy fear, expressing his faith by building the ark. He saved his family and condemned the world. Noah became heir to righteousness. By faith, righteousness behavior is clearly shown and yeah, out, no outworking of his faith. So he didn't just take God, he, he, he did something for God. He, he built the ark. Abraham followed God's instructions and believed in God's promises yeah, for his plans for salvation. Abraham obediently went to a foreign land even though he did not know where he was going. His motivation for that obedience was the hope of attaining the promises yeah, of that land. God's second promise to Abraham, who had given numerous descendants and make them a great nation. Even though Abraham was near death and Sarah was barren, by faith in God, 
he was able to become a father. The birth of Isaac was a completion yeah, about that promise. Even though he never actually saw the promised land of Canaan. Yeah, obviously the things the promise he's never seen. When they admitted to being strangers and aliens on earth, and they made it clear they were looking for a country of their own and looking for looking for a better country, a heavenly one. This is the connection between Israel's forefathers and the faith of a Christian. We're all pilgrims on a journey of faith, bound for the inheritance of God has provided. For us, learning to trust God and their situations, the patriarchs looked at the reward that was beyond their earthly inheritance. They did not have the same uh, earthly same clear promise of a heavenly homeland that we do. But God delighted in their faith, and through Jesus Christ, he prepared and asked a city for them, a heavenly Jerusalem. Abram's faith was further tested when he won when he was asked by, by sacrifice and one and only son, since God has specifically promised that Abraham's offspring would be reckoned through Isaac. There seemed to be no hope if Isaac died. There seemed to be no hope if Isaac died. However, Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. He expected to be returned from the place of sacrifice with Isaac because he knew the fulfillment of God's promises depended on Isaac's survival and trusted with God that resolved the problem. What Hebrews is a book really, as I said before, where it just brings everything together. So even if you've not read the Old Testament as a new Christian, you can read the New Testament and see exactly where obviously these things come from, our faith comes from. Okay, as a Christian we know that that promises were fulfilled. We've got the ability to look backwards. Get those when the promises made to Abraham and to know obviously was warned they didn't have the ability to look forward into the future they just had the faith that what god was telling them was going to happen and in such a way that they reacted to that message now we've got the ability to look back through the bible and see where god said something and where that promise was fulfilled now i know that in my life that god has made lots of promises to me and I may not see them today and I may not see them tomorrow, but I know through faith and through encouragement, it's books like Hebrew, that those promises are going to be completed. See, when Justin said about going out into town, you go out into town through faith, you know that obviously somebody is going to be put there that God wants you to speak to that day. And it may be the person that ignores you, that you just give the track to, but might go home and read it and that seed may be planted. You may go out and oh, 20 times and never get actually a chance to speak to anybody. But you know on that 21st time, if you don't go, that person's going to be there and it's you that's missing. So we do these things through faith. Okay, it's not he easy being stood up here in front of people speaking. And sometimes I think I'm, I don't know enough to just come up here and speak. But I do so through obedience. Not through duty, I come through obedience to speak to you. Hey, the same as when we come to church in the morning or in the afternoon or the evening. We don't do it through duty. We don't do it through habit. We do it through obedience. We do it through faith. So no matter what God puts in your heart this morning or over the next few days, no matter how hard it may be for you to actually do those things or how unbelievable it may be that God's put those things into your head that you may think that you're not good enough or you, it, that's never going to work. Do so through faith. See what comes of it. I know I do every single day. I just want to finish. 
that I had addiction problems and for years I struggled with them. I hid them from people. I had, I, I spoke to my doctor about them, I had counseling about them and nothing worked. Medication for it, nothing worked. But the moment I gave my life to God and four years now, I've had no problems with that addiction. Now, somebody said to me, trust God, when I was going through the worst of it, it I, I wouldn't have. It's only when God moved me to be with people who were Christians, when I listened to what they were saying to me and I met people in this church and I was showing the love and compassion of Christ through their actions, that actually a change was made in me. And I, wake, I know that through my obedience to the Lord and through my faith in his abundant blessing on my life, that I've been able one day at a time to beat that addiction to the point now where I can actually talk about it freely and without the shame of it, saying that God did that in my life. And he did that in my life from the promise he made when I became a Christian that I couldn't see to now seeing it come to full fruit. And I talk about being married three years. It's because of God's ability to help me cure that addiction that I'm a married man now. And I give celebration to that. So if God's asking you to do something, do it obediently. You may not see the outcome in your lifetime. You may not see the outcome because that person may go somewhere else and do something else. But just know that that thing that God's asking you to do is going to come to fruition, is going to happen. Okay. So that's all I really want to speak about this morning. Thank you for listening.